Well, hello friends, Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to thank you guys for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, this literally does not work. Um, I'm actually sitting here on a roof. It's about 75 degrees and sunny. I probably should put some sunscreen on. I really should have some sunglasses on because my eyes, of course, are getting messed up from the sunshine. But I'll go ahead when I go down next time and get that. Today, we're doing some work on a roof. The funny thing, or the amazing thing, is the power of water. You know, Q, I've been talking to you about your house where you don't have gutters on it. Dude, you need to get those gutters because, see, here's what will happen is that water coming off of the roof will go down and it will penetrate the foundation. It will end up being leaks into the foundations if you have a basement and things like that. Or, even if it's waterproof, what it does is it ends up undermining the foundation. And you start to get it settling. You'll start to see cracks in the house and things. You'll see the moisture on there. And literally, a lack of a gutter or a clogged gutter can be thousands of dollars in repairs. Well, let me show you the power <laughs> of water. I'm up here on this roof. See right here? This was one nail hole at the scene. And you can see the damage that this did to the plywood and this rafter that's in here it's completely gone so what we're gonna have to do is i'm gonna have to cut out a four foot section of the roof here because these are on 24 inch centers sister up a new two by four in here to take the load put a new piece of plywood in there after i cut this of course so it fits put down new tar paper and then re-shingle the roof now i've got some shingles that are this color they may not be exact because, well, this was probably put on like 20 years ago. It was put on before uh, I ever saw the house, so it's definitely going to be a little bit older, but we don't want it to go through and replace all these. They still have a good uh, 10 years maybe left of life on here, provided that we don't have any more leaks. But this is the thing. This is one of those things that had they discovered that um, there was a nail hole in here or a nail pop that it would have ended up being a little tar and it would have been fixed. But over the years, time has done a whole lot of damage. So we've already pulled back the shingles. I'm going to continue to pull back the shingles. We're going to go basically and replace this whole piece of plywood. So fortunately, it's not up here further into the house where we don't have to damage it. But what we can do is we can take the shingles to where the natural break points are. And you can see where I've already done it over here where there's stair step. So we'll be able to replace those shingles real easy. The hard part, again, is... I just don't like being up on a roof because, well, when it comes to being a roof, I hate to say it, but I'm the P word. So let me get back to work here. Wow. Take a look at that. There is completely, that is completely shot. Mm. So we'll cut this off in the middle of the joist right there. And we're okay here, fortunately. Yeah, we're fortunately we're okay there. So we need to pull off over in there. Okay, so we've got out four by four piece of the uh, plywood out. You can see here, this is rotted right there of this engineer truss. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna slide another two by four up in here with it, cross screw it in here, carry it on through, and we'll do the same thing on the other side. So this way, it'll take the place of it. And we're gonna put one actually up underneath of this to support that as well. So that's called sistering in the piece. Um, fortunately, at least, you can still see the rest of this plywood still actually looks really, really good. So not the worst thing in the world, but um, something that you definitely gotta take care of. We actually have our two by four here that we've sistered in. We've cross screwed it back all the way up in here so it's tight. Now to give ourselves a little bit extra because we know that the two by four is still good from here, from, all right, so we're progressing right now. Here's what we've got done. We've got our two by four right here, sistered in here, back where it's screwed into the meat, and we're gonna put another block down over here to transfer that load um, to our main beam here. This carries all the way through, and we've screwed it together with it. Um, the original rafter is, you can see this is not good in here, but from about this point back, it's still good. So we're good, we've transferred the load on there, and now, for a little extra support, we actually put this kicker so it's right up underneath of the good part of that meat, and we'll screw this into here and screw it up in the top. And as you can see, that is nice and tight. We'll put in the piece of plywood, 
put the tar paper up underneath of it and then we'll re-shingle it and we'll be as good as new. The next project we've got to take care of is we've got to deal with the soffit. Some of the boards are probably going to have to be replaced because we have a bird going in there, uh, but we're going to actually wrap it with uh, sheet metal and then put a vinyl soffit underneath of it. So the work never right, ends. Great news. We've got our piece of OSB put in here, cut perfectly to match, and now we've got some tar paper. We're going to roll out the tar paper and we're going to tuck it. You can see we've actually gone up underneath the shingles here where the lap joint is. We're going to put that in, staple that down, and then we can start actually putting in our shingles. So uh, we'll be able to put this job to bed. Thank goodness. No more leaks on the porch. Just got to get this All thing right, in. So we're tar papered up, and now. We're going to put our shingles back on here. The way shingles go, now this is the three tab. Now everybody does architectural ones, which are good for another five years. Um, the three tab, which like I said, is kind of an old style. What you're doing is you're actually putting the first row upside down. And then that way you're alternating the joints. So this joint will go over a solid piece. And just like plumbing, the great thing about everything is water and shit all go downhill so this shingle of course goes on then the next one goes up and so on and so on and that keeps the water from penetrating the roof if you were trying to go up this way it would go in because well that's the way it is but because everything goes downhill okay so good. you can see we got the starter piece down in here and you see how the joint is not over top of the seams the joint is right over here and so that way the water will beat off of that and you can see we started working our way over now the color this is of course the same color it's just that this is a little older so it's gotten a little darker you can see it's slight difference but unless we change the whole roof you're just not going to be able to uh to um get the colors exact because again these have been down 20 years and this of course was just made recently that's it we have all the shingles in place. There's a slight color variation, but not enough that it'll really be noticeable. We'll put the gutter guards back in place and uh, we're good to go. And then the next time, get a nice day, we'll take down the gutters and work on the software. I'm Mark Holmes, and well, as always, I want to thank you guys for being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. I'll see you soon.